going on guys Sasuke the Savage here today I'm going to be reviewing Attack on Titan chapter 111 so this time around I'm going to skip the summary and get right down to it talking about the characters and what they did in this chapter because I have shit to do so I have to make this kind of quick the first character I'm going to talk about is Hanji now if you guys have seen my previous Attack on Titan videos you would know that Hanji is my current favorite character in this manga she's not my all-time favorite that title goes to Erwin. But over the course of these last chapters, I'm slowly and slowly having to backtrack on Hanji because I'm starting to lose faith. Hanji Zo right now is not looking like a good leader. And it pains me to say that, but what else can I say when she's letting shit fly under her radar? She's not being well informed. And she let Aaron go AWOL on two different occasions. And it's not only that. It's also the fact that Hanji just doesn't feel the same to me because what I really loved about Hanji was her eccentric, crazy scientist personality. And we see flashes of that when she was in a cell with Aaron. But for the most part, she's always serious. And I can't blame Isayama for this because what's happening right now is very, very serious. But I just miss Hanji the way she was before. And because you had someone like Floach, who was a part of the Survey Corps Regiment, aiding Aaron, now Hanji is under even more fire. And it's like, damn, she just cannot catch a break. Things are so bad that Hanji had to offer to resign from the position entirely. And like I said, I love Hanji, but too much shit is happening under her watch. And it makes you wonder, did Erwin make the right decision when he basically gave the position to Hanji in retrospect, it doesn't look like it. But at that time, I mean, who else was going to do it? Levi wasn't. Now, moving on to Commander Pixis, all right? Everybody is wondering what should they do because Zachary is dead, Aaron escaped, so they're running around like a chicken with their head cut off. So that's when Pixis steps in and Armin's like, there, Pixis, all right. You can tell us what to do. What do we do, Commander? Eh, fuck it. Let's just give up. Nigga, what? The reasoning behind Pitts' bold statement is the fact that he does not want any more casualties than it needs to be. And it sounds crazy, but Pitts really does not have a choice because a lot of people agree with Aaron. And not only that, there are some people who may be teetering on whether they should side with the survey course or Aaron. So it's practically impossible to find all the traitors in the survey corps. And going further beyond the survey corps, the general public agrees with Aaron, so... They can't do much about that. Pitsis wants to use the knowledge of Zeke's whereabouts as leverage so he can negotiate with Aaron, but based on what Aaron's faction has done so far, they probably are going to be like, yo, either you tell us where Zeke is or we bust your ass. They blew up Zachary and his shit machine. The time for negotiations has long since sailed. We also get a conversation between Kiyomi and Mikasa, and I don't really know what to make of this conversation. It seemed like Kiyomi was lending a hand to Mikasa, but Mikasa's like, yo, I gotta worry about Paradise Island. Like, fuck your help right now. I wonder what role Kiyomi is gonna play in the grand scheme of this, because so far, based on her conversations, she's just dependent on Paradise Island survival, but... She's been shown so much by Isayama, I think she's going to play a bigger role. Now we get into the tail end of the chapter, talking about Falco, Gabby, Kaya, Mr. Braun, and Niccolo. First up is Niccolo. Now he was appearing to be an asshole to Connie and John, but we know because of the events that happened at the end of the chapter that he was actually protecting John. However, Niccolo was not going to protect Gabby from a good old fashioned ass whooping because not only did he give her the hands, the good old fashioned beats, but he also tried to give her the knife. Obviously, our friend Nico really loves Sasha and it was implied that he had some relationship with Sasha, a romantic relationship, which doesn't seem all that probable to me because Sasha seems very asexual. Niccolo was not above killing a kid. He wanted to murder Gabby, and I know a lot of the fandom wished they were Niccolo in that moment. Eventually, though, this whole matter was solved with peace rather than violence, because Mr. Bros decided this wasn't the way. But why did my son Falco have to suffer the consequences? Why did my son Falco 
get hit like that. If you don't know, I have adopted Falco, so he is now officially my son. And Falco did not deserve what he got in his chapter, especially what we learned at the very last page. And talking about Gabby, <laughs> I, I tried to defend her. I tried to, but I can't defend what she did in this chapter. Like, I can't bring myself to hate her, but I can strongly dislike her right now. You would think that after Gabby talked with Kaya, things would resonate with her and she would start to change her mind on Eldians, but that's not happening. Or maybe it is happening, but that talk wasn't enough. But fuck it, man. You got Falco hit over his head with a bottle, man. I don't give a fuck anymore. And not only did Mr. Bra save Gabby's life, but Mikasa did as well. Mikasa already knows who Gabby is and what she did to Sasha. And it shows a lot of maturity from Mikasa. Not that she ever looked immature before, but now she's in a position where she can mentor Gabby and hopefully change Gabby's corrupted mind. I think Kaya represents the fandom more than anybody else because Kaya did not care about any of that. Now, the last page of the chapter told us that what was in that wine potentially was Zeke's spinal fluid. So everybody who drunk it, and that includes my son Falco, they could potentially turn into mindless titans. And there's no doubt in my mind that everybody who drunk that wine will turn into titans because I don't see Zeke using this as a bluff. This also pretty much confirms that Yelena, Zeke, and Aaron are working together because how will all of these events happen without their influence? But after all of the development that Falco got, he is not going to just be a mindless titan. He will become a titan shifter. Possibly eating Reiner because, you know, Reiner has been wanting to give himself up for a while. I just can't believe my son got hurt in all of this. Again, he did not deserve this. This also makes you wonder about Aaron because this spinal fluid in the wine was extremely reckless because even though it was given up to the higher ups, they could have easily shared wine with one of Aaron's friends and they could have been affected by this. There was also the bomb going off right by Mikasa and Armin, so it makes you wonder, like, Aaron, do you give a fuck about your friends anymore? Like, what's up with that? But in my mind, Aaron has turned full anti-hero, so I don't think he's being a villain, although he is doing villainous shit. And it's interesting that we didn't see Piek make a move in this chapter because she was in the last chapter. But so many things are moving into motion, I really think that this was a great chapter and Attack on Titan has been on a roll ever since we've gone back to Paradise Island. Even before then, I was feeling the chapters when Mikasa and the rest of the crew showed up at Marley. Also, I will have a poll question because I firmly believe that Falco will become a Titan Shifter. So the question is, who is he going to eat to become a Titan Shifter? But guys, that is it for my thoughts on this chapter. If you enjoyed this review, like, comment, subscribe. Sasuke the Savage, out. I need some weed, man. Yeah. Some weed. Somebody, Somebody call me. Somebody call me, man. Westside, Drew, Lil Sam, one of them. Let's get it.